Hi guys, Sean here, and today I'm going to be taking this opportunity in this video here to go over some of the work that was submitted to me of one of the purchasers of the demo that I released about a month ago. Uh, Wouter here has, I'll post a link to his uh, Instagram and, and site at the bottom here, and uh, he submitted these to me. I, I found I saw them get posted to me on Instagram and offered to him to kind of just like do a bit of paint over work and just give him some feedback as far as my thoughts about what could be improved, what's going good. Because um, honestly, I wasn't sure if people were going to kind of like follow along and kind of design guns and stuff like that based off the weapons, which is I'm, I'm so happy to see that this is happening. And like I said, I don't want to create like a precedent of like I'm going to do this sort of feedback for everybody. But I definitely want to give an idea as like for, for some of the general feedback as for like maybe a few of these uh, that I see come up or get sent to me that I'll give a little bit of sort of my thoughts on how they can be improved, what's going well, and yeah, and, those, and that kind of stuff. And, and a few ideas on how you could potentially approach these to kind of push them further uh, in interesting ways. A couple of tricks I kind of tell my students, things like that, that, that hopefully I, I think are kind of good ways to kind of break you out of your shell as far as... Uh, trying new things and messing with some of the, the things that as a, as an artist, you might sort of like fall back onto and, and like safe zones that you'll kind of stick to. So, uh, first things first, the nice thing that Wooter did here is that he was using, I guess one of his own designs for a weapon here, um, as sort of a base, which is, which is cool. I'm actually quite happy that, uh, he didn't just use the exact same weapon I used. I highly encourage that. Don't feel like you have to use the, uh, the vector like I do in the demo. So uh, I'm gonna kind of oopsie, where'd that go? I'm gonna kind of go through these one by one here. I'll I'll first uh, I'll go what, go one by one of like what's what I think about them, and then at the end I'll kind of come back and talk about uh, potential fixes and approaches. So uh, first things first, overall one thing that I do notice with a lot of these, I think especially for the first, well actually we'll just label these. One sec here. Say one, two, three, four. Numbering these things is always super handy. <laughs> Highly recommend it, especially for like in a professional sense that people can just immediately say, instead of like the bottom right one, the top right one, it's always like number three, I like this, number four, that, so on and so on. So definitely have these guys numbered. All right, back to real feedback. Okay, so first things first, I think uh, one thing I would definitely avoid on for like a lot of organic designs, or especially if you're wanting to design like in the style of Warframe is that you very rarely see this for the, the Tenno stuff is you don't usually see screws. So even on some of these more organic ones or like and, like, and these little tiny ones here too, definitely avoid that kind of stuff. So always try to think of more interesting ways, I'd say to like create these attachment joints. Like you're doing it here with those types of things, which is good, but always try for, for something kind of almost like a buckle or a strap or something that definitely opt for these types of things as opposed to just traditional round screws or like really big sort of like big big monster bolts that are like one or two inches and have like an interesting design in them is what I would say. And, and, and overall, I think that you do follow the process of like what I was kind of talking about of, of this idea of you're kind of getting into it and slowly sort of easing into this idea of organic design is like I say, like it's not easy, but yeah, you, you start off like pretty, pretty safe, which is fine. And then you get like progressively, I assume it would kind of went in this direction here because I seem to remember you sent me this one first. Uh, but I think it kind of goes sort of like this as far as direction of progress, I understand, if I understand correctly. And I think it's like, it's, it's pretty natural, right? Like kind of like you're getting into the flow. You're just like, okay, stick to your safe zone. And then you start to kind of like push it a little bit further. Okay, let's just, just try some stuff that's happening in the tutorial a little bit more. Uh, and then get like, Get progressively weirder and weirder. Okay, but I think like overall these could be these these could be pushed a little bit further. Um, I will kind of get to it, but I definitely think this one is like the most successful, and we'll talk about that a little bit more at the uh, as I kind of go through this. Okay, so for the very first one here, number one, let's kind of zoom in on it here. Oh. All right. So for number one, I do think it is like like I mentioned at the beginning, it's a little bit too stiff, a little bit too traditional. Um, it's, it feels it feels like a sci-fi gun, but it it definitely doesn't feel like it's it's got any sort of uh, obvious organic stuff happening to it. Uh, you are doing a lot of the things I like. Like I see a lot of these sort of like consistent lines. This is all really really good. 
Um, there might be a little bit too much sort of like stepping and such happening going on in there. So there could be ways to sort of like mitigate that potentially. Like a lot of this kind of stuff here. Or when areas become a little bit kind of too kind of too thin. So there's the potential that like those areas could kind of potentially feel a little bit breakable maybe. Uh, yeah. I think I don't have too much to say about this one because I think it is pretty close to both the, the base under design and also it just it feels sci-fi but it, it just feels like a very kind of traditional sci-fi take potentially. So we'll talk about how we could maybe like look at that later and maybe improve it a bit. Uh, two, like I mentioned, it feels like you're starting to get into the idea of like organic design, which is really nice. I think what is going to need though, it's missing what I was kind of talking about of you want to balance some of these. You have a lot of just like organic shapes like this, organic, organic, or swoop, swoop, swoop. And you're missing that sort of balance of straights and, and that sort of like manufacturing indication. So what I would recommend for something like this is kind of like bringing that balance in there. And here, I'll just like, I'll just paint right over top of this because it's gonna be easier. Of like bringing these straight lines into the design. So you have like a bit of rigidity and then a swoop. Maybe it kind of like straightens out here a little bit and then kind of goes back into a swoop. And you'll want to mimic this with the with some of the interior echoing potentially too of the forms. Oh, kind of pinched that a little bit much there. But you'll start to see that like when I turn this on and off, that the gun starts to have a lot more of like it feels more rigid, or like it's it has more of a directional sense to it and a bit like stronger. Rather than if it, I keep it like super curvy like this, it just feels kind of like it's, it's not like it's melting to that extent, but it feels kind of a little bit too much like it's say made out of a bone or something. It's too organic. Um, and like other potential areas are like, you've got these sort of, let's go back to the red. You've got these sort of like swoops here that just kind of go back, like back a balloon. And then you've got your straight. I think always think of it as, I think it's a, usually a good way to kind of go about this. This is like curve, a straight, another curve, or that's typically how it's, it's, it's going to feel pretty good. You can have like a curve and then another curve, uh, but you've got to have like a straight somewhere in there to kind of like balance it out. So you really want to avoid things like this, right? It's too, it's too many curves happening. But, uh, so it's, it's going to kind of have start to, to look too mushy. Um, so definitely kind of like find ways to sort of bring in some of these curves when possible or some of these straights, sorry. Right. Like it starts to make things feel a little bit better. And then once again, think about how the layering is happening here, where I do feel like, especially it's most prevalent at the front here, that if you start to sort of like interlock pieces in, in, sorry, in ways that sort of like create this. Uh, like a pinching effect or or tangents like this, it, it starts to flatten out the designs and you get less of this feeling of these things are overlapping and kind of interlocking in, in very specific and interesting ways. So avoid tangents like that. So in just case you're not familiar, tangents are like when multiple lines sort of converge into a single area or there's like a, a, a edges kind of get too close to each other and they create this like visual tension where the eye is sort of drawn to that area, that focal point, and it's, it's like a it's like a visual trap and no matter where you're looking the eye will just kind of get sucked to it and you won't be able to sort of escape it so you want to try to avoid that sort of stuff as much as possible it's like an area of tension pretty much so and it has like a double doubling effect of down here when it's like that but it also sort of like flattens out this entire area so a potential solution to that is like you are doing like a little bit of like yeah this is there's some separation of forms here uh, definitely sort of like do that a little bit more, emphasize it. Like there's some significant, you want to, you want to imply that this piece here has like some serious thickness or depth to it. So really punch it up. All right. Really make there be an obvious sort of separation of, 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 uh, thicknesses going on here, overlapping one another. So maybe it kind of curves in a bit. Uh, and 
you get better at it over here where there's like a clear uh how you're, you're treating sort of the gray material versus the the covering material very differently but it's less so on this one here right both the gray and or the the under material and the the outer sort of shell they're being treated very similarly and I think you start to you start to get it. You start to under, you start to realize like wait a sec, these things are starting to look too too close. I should treat them differently, and it becomes more successful as you move on here. But for like for this one here, the big sort of thing is going to be like okay, you got to start thinking about if this top one is organic. How do I make these these other ones feel like potentially like something else, right? Like they're like they're they're made a different sort of way than the other material. That's probably not the best negative shape to have right there. Um, and you're thinking of, and you want to think about sort of how these things could potentially overlap each other and interact with one another. Uh, maybe create some like you're thinking you're starting to think about negative space in here, which is really good. I'd go for like punchier shapes though. Um, how it is kind of here just feels a little bit small. Actually, it's about the same size as that one. But like they get a little bit tiny in some of these here, and so I'd be careful of that. That you want to go for like bigger, bolder sort of like graphic shapes for the for the cutouts, and that's really going to help sort of keep these feeling nice. And also think about sort of areas of attachment that you don't want to just have this like kind of plug in there. I always want when I'm doing thinking of designs like you're doing a good job here like it, it sort of like connects and and it, and it works because it's a more like rigid design. But you want to sort of start to think about okay how are these going to connect? How are they like clipping together? And you can just like imply some scribbly like nonsense shapes here. Uh, this is stuff that. Um, the process of kind of working in 3D is really going to help out because you can kind of scribble this or even in the, at the tightening stage, you can start to figure it out a little bit more, but you can sort of be very uh, indicative and kind of just imply that there's some some sort of shapes in there. Uh, even in the surface breakup sort of some, imply some of the depth and I have some reference here I'll bring up in a second here that'll be really helpful for that. Cool. So something like this potentially. Yeah. And then yeah, and then I think you've, you're doing the same thing. Like you're you're following like some a lot of the directions I, I'm 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 doing the tutorial where it's like a lot of these lines are kind of like lining up and stuff. That's super great to see. They're kind of flowing through each other. Um, I'd be careful of like things like this. Like this shape here feels very awkward and kind of like it's going off on a weird angle a little bit. Uh, so just be careful of that. Uh, having some, like it's creating like once again the tubing effect is happening. I know this is supposed to be like a charging handle ejection, oh no, sorry, the charging handle's there. I guess it's the ejection port type shape. Um, anyways, it's, it's, it's fine this kind of shape like that, uh, but I would sort of like this particular object here, maybe give it a little bit of like variety in sort of like how its shape is being treated. And yeah, something more like that potentially. Okay, cool. All right, uh, we'll kind of leave this one here for now, it's good. All right, we'll jump on to number three here. So for this particular one, um, I, like, I like this one. It's starting to move a little bit more, like get a bit more sort of like organic and flowy. It's pretty close to some of the designs I end up doing in the tutorial, um, especially I think maybe the first one potentially. Uh, but first things first, I think like some of the, the, the overlays or sorry, the, the covering here, it's getting a little bit too organic. And it's almost like, especially shapes like this, they're almost starting to look a little bit like veins, which is a little bit kind of creepy. Uh, and then some of this, these other shapes, like the detailing you've got kind of going on here, they're not so much helping describe the form, but they're almost like kind of looking like tears or something. And I feel like that this could easily be solved by some, some line weight, kind of uh, playing with that a little bit more. So you can see if I kind of come in here and, and like, and just like with a much lighter sort of brush, these breakups become much more interesting, right? Or 
where they become a lot less sort of aggressive. And you really want to think about, once again, when you're doing these shapes, like if I kind of get rid of this, is that this shape, you've got this sort of general feeling of, 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 of as things are flowing back this way, right? Or, or right now it's like a, a lot of back and forth where there's shapes kind of going like this, but then you've got sort of other shapes sort of going the other direction. Uh, so you really want to sort of have like a bit more of a consistency when it comes to like that. Like you're doing a better job, I think, in this one here with that. Uh, and it kind of comes to, to a head here in a good way on this guy. But definitely some of the, the shapes need to be kind of echoing each other a little bit more consistently. So if, if you want them to kind of go in this direction, I think this is a nice kind of covering shape, which is good. Um, you could sort of like echo this shape out here, maybe. And you can see like how I'm talking about in the tutorial where it's like, you want to think about really the physicality of these things, about how they would like wrap around this form here potentially and, and, and curve in an interesting way and breaking the line here and there. Cleaning up some of this stuff here and thinking about how and how, how shapes will actually like um, like overlap each other in, in a way. And, and I find like sometimes like looking like, like bones is a great way, like the, the, the femurs are kind of a, or the hip hip bone is like really, really great for that. Cause it has lots of like really interesting interlocking shapes and stuff. Uh, and so you can kind of get some inspiration how some of these things interlock with one another. And when you're doing sort of this breakup detail like this, really kind of play with this idea of like, of different sizes, right? So once again, like, thick to thin, right? And it doesn't just go like thick and then thin. There's like a transition, right? Like it, sh it goes from like wide, medium, and then skinny, right? Cool. Uh, surface details like that, probably don't need this kind of like markings. Um, same thing, you're, you're losing some, and some of the gray here, you're losing some of that, that indications of, of straights. So straighten that out here and there. That's getting too like just just like mushy organic. Um, this is feeling pretty good in here. I like the details you've got happening. Um, I do think you could have a bit more sort of like layering with it, which could be nice. So even just like that, right? And this, that you get this sort of like more indication of depth. Because right now, if we get rid of those, you've only got layer one, layer two, and then layer the whole. So the more you could sort of create this illusion of depth, the better this kind of stuff is gonna be. Right, like it's starting to look pretty cool now, right? And it doesn't have to be just like straight like that. And then you can kind of have like a little bit more. There, yeah. All right, so that's starting to look pretty cool, I think in there. Um, I know you mentioned to me in some of the, the notes back and forth that you were having some difficulty with some of this stuff. Uh, some of the reference I just kind of grabbed from the internet of just like some of the, the superstructure, I can't remember the, what this is actually called, but like if you look at sort of how when things are manufactured and they have this sort of like metallic or plastic shell that is serves as a base for something, like this camera here, uh, really, really great, especially sort of just like a lot of the shape interactions and all the indications of how these things are going to connect together and... Yeah, it's, it's super, super great. So you really want to like look at this kind of stuff as inspiration for how the machine parts are going to kind of all come together and how they can serve as a nice contrast to some of the more organic stuff. Because there's some nicer sharp shapes in, in here that are pretty cool. Like bigger forms that balance with this sort of like nice screebly sort of detailed elements who are here happening, right? All right, so let's just jump back to that. Okay, so that solves that part there, potentially. Uh, yeah, just like playing with some of the shapes, I think will really help. There we go. All right. Yeah, and it's getting a little bit, once again, too organic back here. Like you need to have some of these, uh, these straights or obvious straights, right? And avoiding like stuff like this, I find be very careful of that kind of stuff because it just ends up being like a very fragile little thing that if this was an actual gun, it would just like if someone bumped this, it would just snap right off, right? And you really want to avoid that kind of potential of this gun just being very fragile and breakable. Um, you could think about how these shapes could interact a little bit more. I feel like there could be indications of not only like how they overlap, say so of this thing, 
if this kind of goes over over here. But there's like some sort of like clip or something here, right? So not only does this shape feed underneath it, but there's this like attachment area right here. So let's lose this. Balance out the organic with the inorganic with a nice straight line. See, it's starting to feel pretty good. Get rid of some of these excess lines that you're not, not needing. Avoid these sort of like, this is pinching too close to that. Feel, that makes the shape feeling a little bit awkward, so you can kind of lose that a little bit. Let's open that up. If you wanted to frame this, you could kind of like give it sort of a, a bit of an edge here. Have this shape sort of flow down into it maybe. Uh, this stuff's all looking pretty good. This would be kind of hard to hold on to, I feel like. It feels like the, the handle's pretty beefy in this. Um, definitely want to have a little bit more surface kind of variation here break up. Uh, sorry, I'm getting distracted here. Um, okay, the next big thing is going to be sort of like, you're doing good here, but definitely be careful of like some of these shapes here where I, I feel like that you're doing the exact same thing as to what you're, what you're doing there. And I don't think it's necessary for an area like this. You're going to want to have like bigger, simpler pieces that are sort of connecting these, these two shapes together, this and this. So this is going to be a connector. It can have greedy details, but you don't, I don't think having it sort of framed the way you're doing it here is necessary. So definitely have it just more of like a feeling of it's like connecting things as opposed to serving as like, like a, over, like an actual like mechanical, like some sort of thing is happening inside of it. Like a, it's charging the gun or something that it could feel more like the, the shooty comes out of here sort of thing and balancing those shapes of like greebly details with, or like the big and the small kind of details, balancing them with one another. So this is another opportunity for some, some cool negative space, maybe. There, something simple like that, right? Okay, and in here, I, I feel like that the, the covering is kind of floating all on its own here a little bit. So maybe kind of kind of giving it a little bit of like a touch of, of, sh of like something going on inside of here might be nice, just like a little indication at the top. Having just sort of like floating in the air is, is I think it's kind of a, a missed opportunity sometimes. So that it's always sort of, you have this layer, this idea of it, it that the, this material is overlapping and it's like, it's, it's physically covering something up to protect it. And so something's always gonna be kind of like recessed underneath it. So you get this like clear one, two sort of feeling, right? And that you wouldn't just have it sort of like uh, randomly floating and then the thing it's protecting is like down here. That it's it's physically wrapping around. Um, and same thing like uh, we talked about earlier here of just like trying to avoid that overly organic feel of this. Kind of looks like a crow's head almost. So I'd maybe like lose this. Make it feel a little bit more mechanical. Yeah, stuff like that maybe. Um, Copy that over, yeah. So you start, and, and once again, like some of these excessive shapes kind of flowing into each other, I don't think you necessarily need. Um, straights, with curves, there. Okay. And maybe. Sorry, I'm working with a pretty chunky brush here. All right, you can start to see as I open up some of these areas here that there's a nice, there's a nice big contrast of like, this starts to become like a bigger piece of metal. This one is a little bit kind of thinner. Um, and it just starts to feel a little bit more interesting. Oh, let's flatten that down, there we go. 
There we are. And yeah, let's just be very careful of your line, line weight here because it's starting to feel like some of these shapes are becoming excessively kind of beefy. And like when you have a, a, a solid, big, thick edge like this, it indicates that there's like a, a sharp, a really like obvious break up there or maybe like an overlap. So I'd say keep these lines kind of a little bit thinner and I really kind of keep this sort of outer form like a little bit more simple potentially. And yeah, don't overcomplicate it too much. Like break it up a little bit, break up these lines a touch, All right? Cause it's still gonna feel like the human eye is like, or the, I guess the brain, the brain and the eye work in conjunction quite nicely where they're, it's very good at sort of just like filling in the gaps and will interpret these sort of transitions of form uh, appropriately as if you're kind of having, having a little bit of breakup in there in an interesting way. Yeah, but this is definitely, it's, it's starting to head in the right direction, which is nice. Just have to keep pushing it. And then for the fourth fourth one, definitely feels like you're starting to kind of like hit your hit your stride here. You're getting into the zone. Uh, when, I, when I kind of like, once again, going back to this this whole collection of them, you could really see the progression of like, this is your, you're hitting it, right? So I feel like the ones you're kind of starting to continue to do afterwards is like, you're starting to, to really kind of get into it here. Um, let's see. So like, there's only like a few areas where I feel like it might be getting a little bit sort of, uh, maybe tube-like here and there. Where am I, where was I thinking? Uh, like maybe in here, it's getting a little bit too like the same shape wise for, for a lot of this stuff here. Um, so maybe some mild break shape variation breakup might be kind of good for it. Uh, yeah, just to offer a little bit of contrast, right? Like something simple like that can go a long ways. Uh, I think this this element here, the spinning element, is really cool, and I think there's a good opportunity there for you to kind of make it more visible or expose it more to the user. Um, whether that be like opening this up, and then you've got sort of more of a sorry, just doing some flipping shortcuts here. Uh, kind of open it up, sort of like this, so you can kind of like the 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 user, or the view, or the user of this weapon can like physically see this thing. That could be kind of cool, maybe. Uh, like I think similar to the problem I was having with like the fourth one I was doing in mind that I ended up doing as the final that it might make this a little bit kind of fragile so but definitely sort of like finding ways to maybe skinny this up or or expose some of these like if this is a cool element definitely try to make it like super visible uh, to to the viewer and make it um, just like an, an area of focus where it's like it's, it's it's visible all the time and it's like an area of interest uh, let's see. Yeah, as I was mentioning, the material the material treatment here is feeling like you're starting to uh, understand that this needs to be this like the covering needs to be simpler, has a very specific kind of execution. Your line weight on it is starting to get more more uh, specific and feels more like there's a different sort of weight difference between the how you're treating the outside versus the interior. So it's giving this nice visual material contrast between it and the under material, which is like more mechanical. Uh, so that's very nice and especially like even how you're treating with like frequency of detail i do feel like once again that some of the shapes feel a little bit kind of just there's some interesting stuff happening but i think if you were to think about this in like if i told you okay now you have to make this in 3d i feel like you wouldn't be able to make heads or tails of this so definitely this is going to become a matter of like find good reference that you think is going to be great for like machined work and go in there and start to to bring those shapes in and think about how, because like when you look at this, that you want you want to think about is like okay, how does how is this thing like constructed, right? Like is there a, a piece kind of connects to here and attaches to it, right? And that there's all these different sort of forms that connect to this thing, that, and those shapes are are made to sort of interlock with one another. And you want to think about that when you're designing this stuff here, so that there's this idea of like okay, maybe. Maybe this is like a, an edge. Maybe this kind of comes down. So it feels more like that they're interacting with one another rather than just being incidentally kind of there with one another. Um, and so you get some, this is like a, a nicer sort of connection between the two as opposed to them just being all over the place. So definitely think about how they can, like you're starting to do it, I see it here, but it's like, it's so, it's, it feels so secondary, right? So definitely, give give way give these things sort of attachments and and feelings of of uh that they're inter they're made for one another right 
Um, and like this kind of stuff here feels good. It's starting to starting to feel good. Like I said, maybe avoid some of these like screw shapes. Um, yeah. Careful with some of these other forms. So definitely, definitely look at look at and find some good reference when it comes to to machined underbits because I know a lot of people have trouble coming coming up with these. And I think you're you're heading in the right direction here. You got repeating forms. Uh, same thing with this repeating shapes. Ha definitely has feel like there's a good contrast between the two. You've got some sort of like indications of manufacturing. You're definitely thinking about that, which is great. Cool negative shapes. Could use a little bit more variety in the negative shapes happening in here. Maybe a bit more like it opens up a touch. Doesn't perfectly kind of follow the silhouette of it. I'm just kind of scribbling right now. Because it can definitely make, make that shape feel a little bit more interesting rather than that sort of uh, the more tube-like following effect, right? And I think the big one on this guy is going to be the what's happening down here, where once again, going back to this and seeing how, how these shapes are interacting and that kind of stuff. Because a lot of it just feels like, see if we just look at this cut line right here, that you're just kind of following the outside shape. And the things are sort of just like filling in and and there isn't this sort of interaction between things that, that you're going to want to have. And like even like, I'm not really sure what's happening here. That if you, if you look at sort of like how computers are made and that sort of stuff, or a motherboard, that there's everything is sort of like logically connected and interacts and and doesn't f it, it feels like there there's some physicality to them and some a dimension, and you're kind of losing it on this and it just feels very pancakey. So finding ways to kind of make this feel like there's some depth and some and some surface change happening to it, and that doesn't just mean like putting shading on here. I mean like indicating sort of things that are like, like this feels like it's further behind, yes, but this overall feels pretty flat. So how do we, how do you kind of go in here and do that? And that could just be like coming up with some of these shapes and thinking about how they interact with one another and connect to one another. Probably not using red would be a good way to do this. <laughs> Right, like just some of these breakups here are starting to make this feel a little bit more like there's some depth and phys physicality to these things. Yeah, especially like how they're how they're interacting with one another. Whoa. Thank you, Cintiq, for doing that. All right. Cool. So you, yeah, you can definitely start to see how it's like starting to bulk it up. Awesome. And careful with like just having these things tracing the edges. Okay. I think that's the that's the big one or the the big sort of high level stuff for a lot of these things here. I think overall, it's it's like it's, it's great to see the sort of the progression from one to the next here because I can definitely see the 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 progress as far as. Uh, it's starting to click, right? Like sometimes this sort of happens when you start at the beginning and actually this, this, this happens very often, right? When you're kind of sort of getting used to a style and, and your brain is sort of like rewiring to sort of get used to it. Because uh, especially something like this, it, it, it's, it's, very, it's very sort of difficult for, for people. Like you don't, you don't get this right away unless you're like, I don't know. This took me a long time to sort of figure this stuff out, as I, I mentioned, the tutorial and stuff. Uh, and I still kind of struggle with it every now and again. It's it's very kind of, it's a constant challenge. Uh, but it's, it's it's really cool to see. And it's, it's awesome kind of like when you do like six of these in a row and you and you constantly like, you're looking back and like, okay, what are the, not the weaknesses, but what could I have done better on this? And what will I on the next one attempt to do? And it's very clear when I, when you kind of see this progression of one, two, three, four, that I can see that you're taking different approaches and trying different stuff each time, which is awesome. And definitely continue to do that. And you're going to see huge improvements because even from like these four massive progress, and that's awesome to see. So it's, it, it's definitely apparent that you're sort of, you're analyzing what's working and how to approach it in the next one. Oh yeah. That was the other thing I forgot to mention on number three. Careful with the uh, frequency of detail in areas that are like not super important um, and could like cause overly distracted kind of form. So maybe just simplify that a touch. Okay, for this second portion, 
I'm going to do a little something that I'll sometimes do in my classes that I teach uh, to kind of like, that I think is like really good to uh, kind of help push some designs a little bit forward. So I'll turn off the layers I was using to kind of like paint over these things. And I'm going to first sort of, the, the main sort of feedback I'm going to be giving on this is going to be pushing this idea of uh, making these more organic and more kind of pushing the crazy. Because I think overall, I think the silhouettes are reading pretty similar to the base weapon that we've got here. So I want to, except for this last one here, actually a couple of them are a little bit different, but I really want to go like extra far with it. And so there's a couple of things we can do. Uh, the first is going to be um, this idea of here to start, we're just going to flatten all these and paste, I'm gonna get them lined up here. All right, and just turn all these off. So we've got our base layer of all these flattened guns. Um, the first one is gonna be this idea of like uh, liquefy and warp. So I, I, don't, I don't do this too much myself, but I do find this kind of like a great way to sort of, like every now and again, it, it, can, it can really help people sort of like break out of their, their, their comfort zones and really push or use what they have created to take things to the next level rather than kind of like, oh, geez, I fucked up, time to start over. Uh, that's not always necessarily the case. You don't always have to be like, oh, this one just doesn't work. Time to sort of like try again. You could actually take like, once you have sort of like these four potential options here, there's a lot we can do with this. So let's start with this idea of using like warp and liquefy to sort of push some of these to the next level. Um, now this isn't guaranteed. It's like, I haven't done this yet on this batch. So this might be kind of, it might not work out. <laughs> uh, so I'll be kind of just like winging this and see how it kind of goes here. Uh, so, all right, let's just kind of cut out some of these pieces here and see what we can kind of do. So everything's kind of this on its own layer. So probably set up a, should set up a shortcut to make this uh, a little bit faster, but just this idea of we can start to like push and pull some of these shapes. Okay, that one didn't work out. Uh, let's try another one here. Um, let's just take this whole front area. Okay. So let's start by just like compressing it. Because the great thing about this is that, um, like it's not, like I said, it doesn't always guarantee that like results will work for this, but it can be a good way to sort of like push things a little bit further. And you've already got like a lot of details that are already happening here. And so there's a lot of opportunity for you to just sort of like mix and uh, mix and rematch or sort of uh, push stuff around so you can get it to work potentially and kind of work with what you've got because there's it's, it's no point in kind of having this stuff go to waste really. Let's try that. And then we can kind of just come in here and play with it a little bit. And this might look a little bit kind of freaky, but like you're gonna be sort of roughly painting over this stuff anyways to try to fill it in and kind of make it make sense. Um, and this could be used in conjunction with like a, with liquify, which I'll show in a minute here, and also the smudge brush, which is really handy. And I just have like a regular square brush here that I'm using that's nothing fancy here. Let me just open up the brush properties so you can kind of get a look at it. Oh, wait, that's not it. There we go. So yeah, it's literally just a square that I turn into a brush and doesn't have to have like high brush spacing or anything like that. There's no like the smoothing on it and that's about it. Spacing's whatever, it doesn't need to, that's not important. Um, do we do need this to be around like 99% to 100 for, uh, for this? And let's not have sample all layers on for this particular one. But let's see here what I can kind of do with this. and how we can start to play with some of these shapes a little bit. So this might look a little bit ridiculous at first, but hopefully you can start to see where I'm going here. Let's just, just copy this whole one right now. Copy. All right. That can be a little bit more destructive here. Actually, I did something interesting there I didn't expect. Hmm. 
Uh, okay, yeah, here we go. That'll work. Let's trim it. Cool. Um, hmm. So you will have to kind of go back in here and draw these guys out a little bit just to kind of make it feel a little bit more, uh, more better. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Okay. So it's, it's also going to be like very experimental and your and like results aren't guaranteed with this. So just you can have some fun with it, kind of play around with the forms and kind of come in here and just clean it up here and there. Um, see what works, see what doesn't. You can go back to the original one here and we can kind of copy out elements that we think could be more interestingly arranged. Um, oh, come back. There we go. And let's keep this one sort of straight. And so we'll just uh, select marquee that and stretch it out. There we go. So you can start to see how we can start to get some pretty interesting shapes here. Um, yeah, so this organic form that's kind of scooping in here is not the most ideal. It's probably a little bit too organic. So we're gonna have to maybe do something about that. Simplify some of it here. Um, actually, we might be able to just straight up uh, make a hole here. Uh, this is kind of like right on that idea. There's like a rail there, which is fine. I'm not against the idea of rails. Not always the most interesting sort of thing, but you know we can work with it. So, yeah, I talk about this a bunch in the tutorial of this like idea of not being precious with these drawings. Of you shouldn't feel bad about kind of coming in here and starting to mess them up a little bit. And you'll you'll find that the, the results you're gonna get are gonna are gonna be much more you're gonna be open to these that idea of Bob Ross's happy happy accidents, um, that are just like they're just gonna make things like a lot more sort of fun for you. There we go. Uh, yeah, like I said, they're not always going to make sense, but you know, that's sometimes guns don't need to make sense. Okay, that probably works for that one. So, I mean, like like I said, results aren't guaranteed. It's not, it's not like the idea of like you're going to make a, a super successful, perfect design out of this. But the goal is like, is it more interesting than the previous one? Well, it's probably pushing some stuff around. So it could maybe be a little bit uh, more interesting that way. Another one would be using a, let's see here. Let's, let's go to a different one here. And then we can kind of play around with different approaches with some of these. Let's use the liquify on this one here. All right, turn that off for now, just so I don't feel too bad. And filter. You know, you can sometimes use these filters. They're actually kind of useful sometimes. Liquify can be really useful. All right, got a new screen here. Let's just shift it over. All right, so here we go. Can have a lot of room. Cool. So liquify is pretty straightforward. Um, it's like just liquefies. Yeah, pretty, pretty nifty. But you can start to see like you can get some pretty cool forms here. Obviously, it could turn into just like a big old mess, which you don't want to have happen. Uh, so, you know, use with caution. Um, but you could definitely like play with, especially for, actually, actually let's do it on the, let's do it on this, this different one. Let's see what we can kind of do with it. This might be kind of fun. Because like a lot of these, like there's some, there's still some opportunity for like to kind of push these things around a little bit more. All right. So let's liquefy it. Uh, windows, sorry, filter, liquefy. All right, okay. 
So we've got this this gun, which is kind of um, feeling a little bit like typical sci-fi. Uh, and how do we make this feel like more organic? Uh, that's going to involve us having to just like, you know, play with some of these shapes, right? Push them, push them and pull them. Keeping in that idea of like, you've got to have uh, that the flats, the curves, the sharps, and you can you just want to like kind of get get the ball rolling with this type of stuff, right? Like you're gonna to have to go in and obviously and clean this stuff up because it's gonna be crazy. Uh, oops, I was talking about not making these just circles. Maybe teardrops might be cooler. Huh? That could work. It already feels a bit more interesting. You kind of round out the bottom here. Give this a bit of a roundness to it. Maybe, yeah, something like that. Really kind of emphasize the shape of touch. There we go. Yeah, it's a bit wobbly, but I mean, we'll be able to come back in and clean this up if we need to, or if we want to, for that matter. Um, and we're looking for like, how do we boost the silhouette on this thing, right? Right, so curve, straight, curve, into a straight. All right, look kind of freaky. We'll just kind of go with it. Go with the flow for now. All right. So you can start to play with some of these areas where it's like there wasn't a lot of interaction, but now it's like there's more overlapping. Might be get, getting a little bit out of control here, but you can definitely see how some of the shapes are starting to feel a little bit more interesting here. Even these, this is like give a bit of curve. The unusualness. Um, maybe this form here. Kind of round. Oh, let's round it the other way. Yeah, there we go. All right, and we can keep that sort of flat top. That's totally cool. Um, maybe let's let's get freaky on this one. Let's try to like really push this idea of like what we can do with this gun to play with the shapes. All right, there we go. We're really kind of opening up some of these spaces here. I know this is supposed to be the safer of the designs, but. You know, even this can be, you can start to like really kind of crank it in a, in a specific direction if you want to and bring it almost like more in line with some of the other guys. All right, that should be about enough for that one. So it's pretty freaky, right? <laughs> uh, unusual compared to like what was there before, right? And I mean, like I said, you're gonna have to go back in here and sort of like clean this stuff up and make the shapes flow a little bit nicer. And obviously you can't have weird pinches like this. And there, that looks a little bit, wait, why isn't this working? Uh, interesting. Oh, clear, that's why. Duh. Um, things like this in here, so you'd have to like kind of thicken it up and play with shapes accordingly. And obviously some of the transitions and objects feel a little bit kind of odd, but you know, it's just kind of pushing you in the right direction and uh, there's an opportunity for you to sort of like play with these a little bit further and continue to refine them if you choose to. And yeah, and you can use these, like all three of those kind of in junction. 
So that's the like I have the the like selection and the the warp set up to a shortcut of just Control W, so I can very easily just like select things and start to warp them around. Uh, much much uh, much more useful shortcut rather than just forcing documents to close in Photoshop. <laughs> um, I would get rid of that as fast as possible. Um, yeah, so the, the Control W for warping, uh, the liquify, the the smudge brush set to like 100%. It just like doesn't have to be a square; it could be like whatever shape. Um, and then also this idea that people seem to take for granted quite often is like once again you've got all these designs. Let's remove the ones, the changes I've made here. You've got these designs and you have this opportunity if you choose to take it to like start to mix and match these things. And once again, you can use that in conjunction with the, the warping and uh, all those other sort of like liquify tools and stuff. But there's some elements that are working nicely here or in others that could be like pushed further. Like maybe we like sort of what's happening here with this shape that we can kind of just come in here and just copy it and move it over here. And this is taken for granted so often, I find, in concept art. I mean, like, so it's good if you do this, like, after the fact, because uh, then you, you'll actually, like, try to integrate these in a believable right way, rather than you say, uh, like I mentioned in the tutorial, that if you just kind of come in and you start to, uh, if you if you say copy this, this thing here and start to work off of it for another pass, it's very likely that this won't change that much. But when you're kind of at a stage where you're ready to sort of like, okay, I have these four, how do I mix and match and uh, push these to the next level even further? Like what's working in some and what can I kind of improve? Uh, so you can really sort of like have some fun with it. And 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 once again, use in conjunction with the warp and the liquify, you can start to get some very unexpected results with some of this stuff. Uh, which could be pretty fun, but you've got to be willing to kind of like get in there and, and try some stuff uh, and, and be open to like some weird stuff that might need some cleanup here and there. So I'm not so much thinking about overly of detail right now, but more just like breaking up these forms and the masses of like materials of this covering versus the exposed cowling down here. Um, so I'm more looking for shapes that I think are, are kind of interesting and I could maybe see transferring across, like even some of like the nice rigid shapes in this first one here, like let's grab some of them. Like definitely we could make use of some of that. I feel like let's, let's experiment. Yeah, right about there. Cool. There. Or there, okay. Right, like so very quickly, it starts to kind of create some interesting opportunities for you uh, to continue to explore as you do this stuff. So definitely don't, if, if like, if a weaker design comes about and you're like, oh, this is kind of like, definitely it was like, oh, I started with this one and definitely it's like a little bit stiffer, I'm not into it yet, that you could bring, it can it can, it can be in, implemented and kind of combined with some of these other elements to create something, something potentially fresh and unique that has a nice balance of, of the 
of some of the parts that make this one feel like like it's working and sort of its current state but like maybe like some of the ones that are potentially overly organic like this one here could benefit from some of the shape language of the say this one uh, so just like copy pasting certain elements and then taking the time to actually integrate them not just like slamming them in there and hoping that they're going to do the work for you but taking the time to kind of feasibly fuse them into oh it actually lines up pretty nicely <laughs> uh, fuse them into the design in a way that could uh, could actually work right um, we'll, we'll yield the best results with this uh, this little exercise Not everything should come over. Like, be very picky about what you uh, have come over into your designs. One thing I forgot to mention in the uh, when I was going over these is definitely try to avoid the like the two and a half D approach thing of like if you're gonna have things that are just like flat orthographics keep it as flat orthographics don't put in a bit of like this unnatural kind of curvature that you only get when stuff's in perspective uh, keep everything just like just straight unless it actually has a curve like this and that's fine <laughs> otherwise I definitely sort of I think I think overall you're doing a good job of that but. Um, definitely try to uh, avoid it when possible. Um, but yeah, so I think that's like that's that's the general gist of it as far as like kind of pushing designs further and, and kind of like trying some interesting shapes here and there. And once again, like like the, the key to this sort of method is going to be not just kind of warping and melting and liquefying these things and hoping that it's going to work that you are going to actually have to you're going to have to use your brain and kind of come in here and, and, and try to actively fuse these elements together to make them work otherwise it's you're not going to get the results you need or that you're looking for and you're going to be disappointed it's going to look like a collage and they might end up looking a bit like a collage anyways but i mean that's why you got to kind of come back in and clean them up a touch so, and it does take a little bit of work to get to, to get to that point. Now, I know I said don't don't have stuff sort of just hanging in there. So let's let's open this guy up a little bit just so we can kind of get some cool view in here. All right. Imply that it goes underneath there. This idea that stuff like wraps around. I think these could definitely benefit from a bit more of that, of like physical overlapping of stuff. Because it feels like everything is, especially like when we look at sort of how this one's being treated, everything kind of stays within its zone, right? These feel separated. When there could be this cool opportunity for like wrapping over, hugging, grabbing, this hugs and grabs. This gets hugged and grabbed here, right? You're kind of doing a little bit here. It's like overlapping there, but yeah, definitely pushing that further. Okay. So I think that about covers it for uh, feedback on this stuff. Um, yeah. And yeah, I think these are going like in a pretty good direction. I think definitely sort of like having more of like a, a um, pulling from some of these, these foundational sort of uh, uh, detail elements will really help sort of bring some, some believability and interest to your, your details. But for the most part, it's going to be just like kind of coming in here and starting to play with the shapes a little bit more. And if you're not totally satisfied with some of these things looking, it's like too rigid, too organic, try to combine certain elements that are working with one and another into something that's a, a unique design. But yeah, finding that nice balance between like that it doesn't feel like something is out of place or too awkward is going to be, it's a tough, it's a tough, uh, tough nut to crack. But uh, yeah. These are looking pretty cool, though. Um, I hope that was hope that was useful. Uh, and 
yeah, if, if anyone's interested in, I guess, uh, sending me stuff, feel free to do it. Can't guarantee I'll do this for, like I said, everyone who wants to uh, go through the tutorial and give this a shot. But I'll probably do like a, a couple more of these or a few more. But this is going to be the general sort of like layout and flow of them. And I won't go over sort of like the warping and the, and the liquefying stuff. That'll be sort of like reserved for this particular one here as far as how you could push these designs further and uh, think of ways to explore it in a, in a way that kind of not so much turns your brain off, but it sort of allows you to organically experiment with uh, potential approaches that you otherwise wouldn't necessarily think about going for. So, yeah. Um, cool. Yeah, so if you guys are interested, like um, this, is, this is pretty much feedback for a tutorial that I did on how to design an organic gun. And yeah, you can pick that up on Gumroad or ArtStation if you're interested. But uh, yeah, the... This this is good. This is like the first part of it where we'll end up like we'll take this into 3D and kind of resolve the design from there. But this is sort of like a, probably the most important granular part of this is like figuring out the design from the side view before you take this into the third dimension and you start to figure out like what is happening <laughs> with some of these shapes here and how do these forms actually interact with each other and such and how do you create like if this is for a first person or a third person game um how do you make this feel feel good and interesting uh so yeah feel free to check that out if you guys have any questions about like what it contains or what it covers uh definitely hit me up uh, and just you can leave me a message here or email me whatever but uh Thank you very much, Wooter, for letting me uh, use your, your art as a foundation for some feedback here. Thanks so much. All right. Bye, guys.